Hi, I'm Vic Bearcroft, and the other day I was lucky enough to pay a visit to the Wildlife Heritage Foundation, which is a big cat sanctuary near Ashford in Kent. Amongst all the stunning cats that were there, there was this one solitary cheetah, and when his keeper called him, he came walking over to us in a typical stalking cheetah pose, allowing me to get the photograph for today's subject. I'm going to demonstrate to you the techniques that you need to produce your own wildlife paintings in pastel, and also to demonstrate that you needn't be daunted at the thought of painting all those spots. Now what I've done is initially sketched out in soft pencil a rough outline before we start painting with the pastels. This is probably one of the most important parts of the painting, is getting the outline established in black pastel, as this will show through the subsequent layers of colour that we apply and give a lot of depth and strength to your painting. So let's begin with the important features, the face, the eyes, the nose, the ears, etc. And then um, a not too difficult task of uh, putting all those spots in. So we'll start with the eyes, using the corners of the pastel, which are the sharp bits. So keep your lines reasonably sketchy. We don't want anything too hard and strong at this stage. Remember that we are dealing with fur, and there's no hard straight lines in nature anyway. What you must do, of course, even though you've sketched this out, is to keep constantly referring back to your reference photo so you don't get misled by any mistakes that you might have made in your initial drawing. So we can uh, fatten up maybe the little teared up stripes that run down the side of the face. These are very distinctive cheetah markings, of course. And we'll establish the position of the pupils at this stage important for that stalking cheetah look. We won't, this far, paint in the nose in all in black because although cheetahs are fairly unique in the big cat family, whereas they're the only ones that have black noses, like dogs, um, the nose itself will give off a slightly blue tint with the shine, so we'll deal with that a little bit later on. Now we'll do the ears and then, as I say, go on to do all those little spots. So the outline of the ears, nice little rounded ears that they have. And also, just suggest some shadows of the hair inside the ears at this stage. Now that we've finished our black outline, we need to start adding some colour. Now, to begin with, the paper I've chosen is a sandy coloured paper. This is ideal for big cats, especially the lion, because it gives you that additional tone, so you don't need to worry about too many tones. What I've got here is uh, an Ashby Soft Pastel, which is very good for velour paper because it's not too soft. And this is going to give us our darker brown tones in the lion mane. So just stroke using the side of the pastel, again in the direction of the fur. So bring it around like that. Always keep an eye on the photograph. Just look for where the darker brown tones are. You can already start to see that the paper itself is giving us the mid-tone browns, if you like. So make the paper work for you as well. And then make sure you leave quite a lot of empty paper in the main. That'll give you a lot of texture, a lot of variation in colour. And then we'll pop a little bit around the muzzle into the forehead and just a touch around the face. The face itself is more of a, a grey brown so we'll deal with that in a moment. Once you've done that just have a little soft rub with your finger. Again imagine you're stroking the lion's mane and then all this lovely colour will start to merge and create a nice soft texture for you. Two tones, a dark brown and a sandy brown. And uh, The next thing we need to do is start to put some grey in there. Again, this is an Ashby pastel, a mid-grey, and if we apply this very, very softly on top of the paper and the existing brown, particularly around the head and the face, we can start to get a, a grey-brown feel to the face. So I apply it lightly and rub it in well so you take most of it off, but just leaves a, a grey-brown surface. It's always better to apply pastel in light layers, and if you need more colour, then add. It's easier to add than to take away. So don't go in too bold. Just be nice and soft. Imagine you're stroking the animal, and that's the kind of effect that we're after. 
be careful as before to follow the direction of the fur. Make them nice little fur-like strokes using the corner of your pastel. Now is the time also just to check for details. Just to make sure you've got everything in place. As you can see, it's really the stripes that make this painting come to life. It, the stripes give all the forms and the shapes that you need. Before we come around to the mouth, I'll just finish off the ears, because we've got these little black tips that need to be quite strong. A few hairs inside the ears as well. Just one or two. You don't need an awful lot. And then we'll come down to the mouth. We've got these whisker lines, which are very important. So they give shape to the muzzle, the way they curve around. Again, just sketch them. Rough lines like that. You don't need to do individual follicles. And then we can Put this nice dark shape around the mouth that comes down into the chin. All tigers have this lovely dark mass just underneath that uh, muzzle. It all helps to create that shape. And then we'll just pep up one or two of the uh, stripes on the legs. 